Warriors books. There's a lot of them. Just counting the main series, there's 44 books, with even more on the horizon thanks to the newest arc, A Starless Clan. Counting all the books, there's over 90 different titles, which is a lot of content to say the least. With this many books, there's bound to be some that fall through the cracks. I spent a lot of time looking for some unknown books, special edition books, alternate covers, along with any cancelled or rumored books in the Warriors franchise, as well as some chapters and stories that were cut from books. And surprisingly, there's a lot of them. I actually got this idea from a commenter who brought up the first book I'll be talking about today. When I first read this comment, it sparked my interest, and I felt like there must be more books like it, so I did some digging. So let's start where my search began, with some field guides. The first book is a Barnes & Noble exclusive, Enter the Clans. Though not an unknown or hidden book by any means, it is one of those books that might slip under the radar if you're just a casual reader. As stated earlier, the book was only sold at Barnes & Noble, and wasn't actually a new book, but rather a book that had two previous field guides in one. And it's not the last time that Warriors did something like this. More on that later. In addition to Code of the Clans and Secrets of the Clans, this field book also allegedly had extra art, a book checklist, previews for some super editions, and a fold-out map. Except for possibly having the best cover art, this book really has nothing new to it. The next book is also a Barnes & Noble exclusive field guide, and is eerily similar to the previous book. The Warrior's Guide, the sixth and second to final field guide, was simply a combination of information from all the previously released field guides in one. My personal theory for this book is that it was a prototype for the ultimate guide, based on the content and the name. And by the looks of it, the book was very much so a cash grab. The cover art is terrible to say the least, and unlike Enter the Clans, this is possibly the worst cover art for any Warriors book by a long shot. For some reason it has these like lines that are slashed through the front, and has this weird tagline, and honestly when I first saw it, it was on a secondhand book site and I thought it was some bootleg or fan made book. It just does not look up to par with any field guides or really any of the other Warriors books. It seems as though the publishers agreed, as this book is, as of right now, the only Warriors book that is out of print, meaning that you can only buy it secondhand. What's also interesting is that the Barnes & Noble website doesn't even give it the official tag for the Warriors series. Every other book released under the Aaron Hunter name has a tag for the corresponding series, but this one is sort of just there? The Warriors website also doesn't have this book listed anywhere. It seems as though they're almost ashamed of this book. The next group of books I'll be talking about are the cancelled and rumored books. And since I was just talking about field guides, let's start with the cancelled field guide, Allegiances of the Clans. I've gone over this book before in the past, but for those who might not know, this book was a field guide initially set to be the fifth field guide, but it was scrapped by HarperCollins as they feel like the book didn't have enough content. It's unknown what this book was about, but it's likely that it had a similar structure to the other field guides and it had more short stories about different cats and all of the other clans, mostly relating to the relationships, whether it be romantic or platonic, in the series. It's possible that we could have seen more cross-clan relationships than the ones originally listed in the books, or it could delve deeper into ones like Windflight's parents. Another book that was cancelled was actually a 2011 super edition that focused on the early settlers of the clans. No name or information was given about this super edition, as the only information given was that it was focused on the creation of the clans. However, this book was scrapped and later turned into the Dawns of the Clan arc itself. Another rumored super edition is the ill-fated Alderheart's Mistake. Alderheart's Mistake was a rumored super edition that came about at the same time as another title, A Scorched Earth. Alderheart's Mistake came from a Goodreads listing, and fans jumped at the chance to make fun of this book as soon as possible. The book, however, was confirmed to be fake, as any person can simply make a Goodreads listing. A Scorched Earth, the other rumored title that was found at the same time as Elderheart's Mistake, was the alleged third title in the Broken Code arc. Much like with the rumored Super Edition, people quickly caught on to the fact that this listing was fake. The final cancelled book I'll be speaking about is actually a story that was removed from Secrets of the Clans. A story involving Ashpaw and Fernpaw was removed from the final edition of the Field Guide, for no known reason. The story described the siblings' feelings during the dog chase that took place in a dangerous path. The same dogs that killed their mother. I don't see why this story would have been scrapped because I think it actually would have been a nice addition to the book, but it seems that the publishers thought otherwise.
While on the topic of short stories, let's talk about some bonus chapters and official short stories in plays written by the Aaron Hunter team. While this next entry isn't something unknown, I feel as though a portion of the community isn't aware of these chapters, as they're also only included in specific books. In the A Vision of Shadows arc, HarperCollins and Barnes & Noble teamed up once again to distribute special bonus chapters, only available in the hardcover editions of the book. These bonus chapters all take place during the events in the books and give some extra insight as to what's happening in the other clans or with other cats. Some chapters also tease what might be happening later in the arc, like the bonus scene between Needlepaw and Tree. I'm unsure if these bonus scenes are available with the books anymore, as they might have just been limited to the first prints of the book. The Barnes & Noble website doesn't have these bonus chapter edition books listed, but that doesn't mean they're not out there. The Aaron team have also posted multiple short stories throughout the years, on the Old Warriors website and the now defunct app. A total of six short stories have been published, along with two plays. Two of the short stories are alternatives to chapters in the Dawn of the Clans arc, with one focusing on Brightstream and the other on Tall Shadow. The other short stories take place after important events or are simply just some insights on what a character was thinking, like with Spotted Leaf's honest answer in which she talks about her relationship with Firestar. I'll be leaving a link to these short stories in the description if you're interested in reading them for yourself. The Aaron Hunter team also wrote two plays. One taking place after sunset and features Leafpool, and the other play written about Bright Spirit and used as a fundraiser. These links will also be in the description. For the final segment of this video, let's talk about special editions. And no, not super editions, special editions. I could take up this space and talk about some misprinted books, or first edition books littered with signature typos and errors, or even books that look funny, but instead I'll be talking about some real, legitimate books that have been out of print for a while and are almost impossible to find. While browsing a website for some secondhand books, I happened to stumble upon a strange listing. At first I thought it was an error, but I was so intrigued that I bought it anyways just to see what it was. Lo and behold, here they are. Judging the book off its cover, it looks like a normal hardcover copy of these books. However, upon closer inspection, these books are a lot thicker and actually have two books in one. These books are called Pob Bind-Up Books. Pob meaning paper over board binding, which is when a book's design is printed straight onto the book cover itself rather than on a dust jacket like we see with most Warriors books. These books were produced through the first two series, ending with Sunset, but they're totaling out to be only six versions of these Pob books. Not much else is known about these books, and I'm not sure why they decided to stop after sunset. But taking a quick flip through the book, there's no real difference between this book and the originals, only having a different cover, and there being two books in one. These books are still quite interesting, and it's not something I see a lot of people talking about. So if you have one of these books, let me know in the comments. I want to see how popular these books are. The last thing I'll be talking about today are the alternate covers of Rising Storm. While many of the older Warriors books now have two different covers, with the old art by Wayne and the new art by Owen Richardson, Rising Storm actually has two alternate covers done by Wayne. There is what I like to call the Cloud Kid Edition and the Sandstorm Edition. Since these books released so long ago, before the surge of the internet, no known reason was documented as to why they changed the covers. And from what I've learned from my extensive eBay research, is that hardcover versions of Rising Storm have Cloud Kid on them, while the reprinted paperbacks have Sandstorm. Not sure why HarperCollins decided this, as I personally love the Cloud Kit edition more. And I feel like the Sandstorm version just isn't as memorable and doesn't stand out as much. Maybe they used the Sandstorm version as the identifier of which books were changed. As this was the book infamously known for the honey scene, which caused outrage after people called out the fact that cats couldn't taste sweet flavors. Regardless, I feel like it was an interesting bit of trivia and something to leave you all with. As always, thank you guys for listening to me ramble on about some cat books for a few minutes. If you have any more interesting book facts, please let me know in the comments. I personally love reading weird facts like this and I hope you enjoyed it too. Thanks for watching and have a good one.